Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli and in front of me I have this cute scene I created for another channel which is called Mobox Graphics. If you haven't noticed this already, I make plenty of videos on that channel, so make sure to check that out if you want to create something like this. But what I often like to do with this kind of renders is adding a depth of field effect to this. For those who are familiar with this, you know this can be done by going to the render settings and preferably setting the renderer to physical. So in there we can make sure depth of field is turned on. And we also want to make sure the sampling quality is set to high, otherwise the blur will not be as smooth as we want it to. So when you've done that, you need to make sure there is a camera object in your scene. And under the object tab you can set the focus distance by clicking this small arrow and clicking on the object you want to be in focus. And then we need to go in the physical tab and set the f-stop to most of the time a very small number. Then we need to render and see what this looks like. It often takes a lot of time to render because of the physical renderer we enabled with the high sampling turned on. And when it is done rendering, you may notice it isn't exactly the result you were looking for. So that means you need to play around with the settings again and render again to see how this looks. So this can turn out to be a pretty time consuming process. So what I like to do is having some kind of dynamic depth of field, which can be adjusted after the rendering. You can do that by going to the render settings again and we are going to set the renderer to standard again because we don't need the depth of field of the physical render again. Now let's enable the multipass option. This is something you may not have used very often or maybe not at all. But by turning this on we can go to the bottom here and click on multipass and let's choose the depth pass. So this way if we enable the save option we have two fields where we can add the name of the file. So this means we will have two files. One will be the original image, like it usually is being rendered. And the second image will be the depth pass in this case. So that means it will render an image that just holds the information of the depth of the image. So not the colors and all the lighting effects, just the depth. But now we need to do one more thing before we start rendering and saving this image. Let's go back to our camera object. Make sure you're outside of the view, so this white square needs to be unchecked. Also make sure the viewport filter has the camera filter enabled, otherwise you cannot see where the camera is in the scene. So now you should have something like this. Let's go to the details tab of this camera. And we need to enable the depth of field map front blur and the depth of field map rear blur. So if you've enabled this, you should see we have two new frames at the front and the back of the center one we already had. So the one the furthest away from the camera is the rear blur. So let's make sure we drag this somewhere close to the end of the scene. So the place which will be the last point that needs to be calculated in depth. And let's also grab this one at the front and line this up with the front of the scene. So the first point that needs to be calculated in depth. And we also have this original rectangle at the center. Let's just place it somewhere in the center relative to the other two rectangles. So what I'm also going to do is add a second camera. So I can show you what this process looks like when we are closer to the scene. So let's set it up like this. And in this case we will not grab the front blur, but just grab the center handle and drag it all the way close to the front of the camera. You may notice that the front blur also moved along with this, so now this behind the camera. So we need to fix that by starting and ending it at 0 cm, so this reset at just the start position. Apart from that it is just the same thing with the blur in the back. But I'm just going to use the original camera to render this out, because I think it looks better anyway. So let's go to the render settings once more, make sure we have the multipass enabled, and also the save option with two different file names. I'm also quickly going to adjust the dimensions. And now let's render this out. You may already notice that I have this kind of foggy looking landscape. That is because I already have the single pass enabled. So if you go to the layer option at the top here of your images that are being rendered, you can see I have the single pass enabled, but you should have the image pass enabled. So in here you can see we have the two different layers in this case. And if you're in the single pass, you can click on one of these layers and see what it looks like in solo view. So this grayscale kind of render is what will be our depth pass. We will open this in Photoshop. And let's also create a new layer where we can drag the depth pass on top of it. So when you've successfully added the depth pass on a new layer, we're going to press Ctrl and A to select everything on this layer. Let's copy this. 
And now we can just hide this layer because we don't need to see it anymore. Let's select the original image and let's take a look at the channels of this. So we have the RGB, red, green and blue in here. But we're going to create a new channel for this one. And this channel will be black by default. But we're going to paste this depth pass in this. Let's also make sure we re-enable the RGB and red, green and blue channels and disable the alpha channel because otherwise it will interfere with the look of the original image. Also when you go back to the layers you can see this is red right now. So that's a good sign, it means it worked. But you also need to make sure this is disabled. I don't exactly know why but it is just the way it is. So let's select the other layer and this one again. And now we can start adding the blur to this. So let's go to filter add a lens blur and you should get this new window. By default it should set the depth map to alpha 1. If that is not the case you need to set the source to the alpha channel we just created. And now it is just a matter of playing with these values actually. So the blur focal distance is exactly what it says. So it determines which part is being blurred and which one is not. Also at the iris settings I like to keep this at octagon because the blurring looks a bit smoother in my opinion. Also cranking up the blade curvature is helping a bit to make it look smoother. And of course the radius is the most important value of all of these because this will tell how strong the depth of field will be. When you're done you can press OK. So you're done now. But one thing I noticed with this kind of technique is if you look at some details where you have some sharp edges like on these trees it has a bit of bleeding on this and I don't like that. So what I like to do to fix this is creating a new layer and we're just going to add the original image on top of this. So just a sharp one without depth of field. And let's add a mask on this. Make sure the mask is selected. And we're going to fill this with a black color. Now we can use a white brush which is quite soft. And just drag over the parts which we want to be sharper. So that's just a basic Photoshop technique. But we didn't fix the bleeding on the trees yet. So what I like to do again is making a duplicate of this blurred image and let's add a blur on this once more but this time a Gaussian blur and you want to zoom in on the parts that are bleeding so we can add just the right amount of blur to make sure the bleeding is a bit less visible so in this case even a one pixel Gaussian blur is just enough to fix this now we can go ahead and create a new mask again and make this black and we're just going to brush again over the parts that should be sharper so that's mostly the houses at the center. So from here on you can keep making adjustments in Photoshop, that's up to you. But this was just a basic technique of how I can add some dynamic blur after rendering the image. I hope this short video can help you save some time in the future. So if you enjoyed it, leaving a like really means a lot to me. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.